The most important thing you can do for reading imaging is to develop your own search algorithm. The reason this is so important is because our brains aren't designed to see things that we're not looking for. And so if you want to find subtle signs, you're going to need to develop a system that prevents you from missing findings. If you don't believe me, go online and look at some of the videos out there. So they'll have people dribbling basketballs, and there's literally a person in a gorilla suit walking around like, between the people with basketballs. And most people won't even notice the gorilla. I certainly didn't when I looked at it first time. And even when I was new, when I knew I was supposed to look for a gorilla, I sometimes didn't see the gorilla. So case in point, you're not going to find it unless you look for it. Uh, one other tip, don't stop searching once you find something. Patients don't sign contracts to only have one problem. You don't want to miss a lung cancer because you're too excited about finding a pneumothorax. And believe me, this has happened many times before. So what I want to talk about in this video is a search algorithm for reading PAAP chest x-rays. There will be other videos that will go into more detail about reading chest x-rays. You can develop whatever system you want as long as it works for you. But this is the one that I've been taught and I feel pretty comfortable with it. A good way to remember the system is A, B, C, D, E in which A stands for airways, B stands for bones, C stands for cardiac and mediastinum, mediastinum, and D stands for diaphragm. Lastly, everything, or E stands for everything else, and that would include lung fields and lines. So let's talk about each of these in a little bit of detail. So first up is A for airways. So you want to look at the trachea and make sure that you see the angle of the crina is not too open or closed and that the trachea is at the midline. And so that's the trachea. And so you want to make sure it's at the midline and not shifted in either direction. So let's move on to B, which is for bones. So you want to look for symmetry between the clavicles. And so I'm just highlighting the lower border of clavicles here, and then that's the upper border of the clavicles. I also want to look at the scapula, and I'm outlining the border of the scapula for you here. That's on the right side, and this one is the scapula on the left side. The humerus, which you actually can't see in this film, and the ribs. So I do want to talk a little bit about counting ribs because it's something that people don't realize they do poorly. So the first rib is actually here. So that's the first rib on the left side. And this first rib on the right side is going to look like this. Right? So I know it doesn't look like, uh, you don't think that is, but that actually is the first rib. And the second rib is actually here. So that's the second rib and I'm outlining its borders. And for the right side, it's that same thing. So if you want to count ribs, you have one on both sides. You have two on both sides. And then from there, it gets pretty easy. So three. And I'm just drawing a line in the middle of the rib. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. 11, 12. And so that's how you count ribs. And what you're looking for by looking at all these bones is to see if there's any fractures or any displacement or anything like that. You also want to take a look at the spine uh, to see if you can see anything abnormal. So the spine should be relatively straight. And you can see this, uh, the different discs there. And then at the middle should be the spinous process. And that the spinous process should be at the middle. Now for C or cardiac, you want to look at the borders of the heart and make sure that the left and right borders are sharp. The maximum width of the heart should be less than 50% of the maximum width of the chest. And so this is the maximum width of the heart, and then this is the maximum width of the chest. And the heart should be less than 50% of the chest. You should also be able to see the aortic knob, which is here, uh, and the descending aorta, which is here, going down. And the borders of the mediastinum should be should be sharp and not enlarged. And so, yeah, that's the medium. Uh, that's those are the borders of the mediastinum. Uh, the hilums are here and here, and they usually look a bit fuzzy, which is okay.
And so now let's talk about D or diaphragm. So the two diaphragms should be sharp, as I'm drawing out here. And you want to look underneath the diaphragm to see if there's any air. And if you do see an air underneath the diaphragm, you'll see an area that's darker uh, than what you're seeing in this film. Uh, the right diaphragm is normally a bit more elevated than the left. And that's normal. Uh, and you just want to check to make sure there isn't an extreme asymmetry between uh, how high the two diaphragms are. And lastly, you should also be able to see the air bubble inside the stomach, which is right here. And lastly, E for everything else, you want to scan the lung fields in a specific pattern uh, to make sure you cover everything. So what I'm doing here is showing you the pattern that I would go over with my eyes to make sure I don't miss anything. And then it's the same thing for the other side, and I'm going to do this really quickly. After that, you want to check to make sure that the costal vertigo angles are sharp. And so they should look like that and like that. And what you're looking for is any signs of blunting. And finally, you want to check for any lines, such as ET tubes, which would be here, NG tubes, which go from the esophagus to your stomach, feeding tubes, which kind of extend into your duodenum. They're kind of like NG tubes, but just longer. Uh, pick lines, which would go up into your SVC or central line, such as the IgJ central line. So there you have it. Um, and here are our take-home points. Number one, it's important uh, to develop a search system for images because we don't see what we don't look for. And you don't want to be that guy that misses something huge because you didn't look for it. One search algorithm is ABCDE, where airway, bones, cardiac aminostanium, diaphragm, and everything else. And finally, the best way to get better at reading images is to read images. There's no way around it. It can be painful at first, but you need to do it. And it's really about trial and error. Um, but you'll learn and you'll get very good at it. Thank you.